Welcome to the car guys and welcome to Joe Macari's in London, a super hypercar dealer that I've never been to before. I'm here with supercar driver, it's a breakfast meet, I brought the 718 Spider, and we're here for a bit of supercar shopping. Is there anything here that could vie for the replacement for the Ferrari F40? Let's find out, shall we? I'm here at Joe Macari's on a mild Sunday morning with Supercar Driver. This is a breakfast meet for its members. I've never actually been to Joe Macari's showroom before. Obviously, I've spent lots of time drooling over his stock online, but this is the first time I've actually come to the showroom. And it's an enormous temple of super and hypercar metal. Some of the rarest, most desirable, limited in number cars that you will find anywhere a vast array of Ferraris, vintage Ferraris as well as modern. But what I love about places like this is that you can see such a varied number of cars all in one place. So if, for example, you are looking for a replacement for your F40, or if you are simply supercar shopping, this is a great place to come. So there's a couple of models here that I'd like to see in a little bit more detail. They are actually in the enviable position of having an Enzo and an F50 pretty much next to each other. Joe Macari is the official dealer for Delara, so that hot new sort of track-based supercar. And they have two examples here, one in a very pretty light blue and one in green carbon, which looks mean as hell. I'm also quite interested because they have a couple of Ferrari Testarossas, a 512M and a original Testarossa, and you don't see them every day. They also have a pristine Lamborghini Mura SV. That's a bit of me, I have to say. Let's take a look at the cars downstairs. I'll take you through everything that's here and which ones have caught my eye. Now you all know that I love a Ferrari Testarossa. We've got two examples here at Joe Macari. We have an original monoposto, which means basically it's got one wing mirror up on the A pillar high up. The first cars were like this and that does make them more collectible. But I have to say, I just think it looks a bit stupid. And we also have the 512M, the Modificato, which is the last generation. They do say that the 512M is the best driving, best handling version of the Testarossa. But for me, I cannot get away from those goony headlights and those horrendous circular rear lights. Just ruins the look of the car for me. 512M, original Testarossa. 512M, original Testarossa. For me, it's this car on the left every single day of the week. This is definitely a car guy's vehicle. This is a 997 GT2 RS. Always quite fancy these. See the carbon bonnet? The outrageous wing. This, my friends, is a Ferrari 250 Lusso, 1960s glorious vintage Ferrari. It's on the same platform and chassis base as the 250 GTO and the 250 short wheelbase. And I'll tell you a little story about this. I almost bought one of these cars in 2013. I was sat near Chris Evans, I was at an auction, and I had the money to buy one of these. It was quite affordable when all of the other 250 cars had gone way, way out of my price range. I was there at the auctions in London, ready to buy a car just like this one. Needed a little bit more work, so this one is a perfect example of the 250 Lusso. I reckoned, quite wisely as it turned out, that they were going to shoot up in value. The bidder started at £300,000. I put my hand up immediately and uh, got the first bid and I was looking forward to maybe 10 minutes of active, fun, exciting bidding. The next bid that came in, someone raised their hand and said £600,000. Blew me out of the water instantly. I think the car eventually went for £800,000, which was more than I was prepared to pay. But these cars now, particularly in this condition, are worth £1.2 to £1.4 million. Pounds. So it's another one that got away. Even though I should love the 250 short wheelbase, I've never liked it in red, 
and I've never liked it as much as many of the other cars. I'm not sure if it's the short, stubby profile of the car. I don't know. I should love these cars, but I do not have as much want for this than, say, the Lusso. And now we're really talking. Now we are looking at one of the cars that I've dreamed about my whole life, the Lamborghini Miura SV. One of the most beautiful cars ever made, and I'll have no arguments about that. Yeah, this could be a real contender for replacement for the Ferrari F40. It's the prettiest car ever made. It has the slats on the back. It's got the exhaust, it's low to the ground. It's manual, it's naturally aspirated. It's a V12 Lamborghini. There is no part of this story that I'm not interested in. No eyelashes like you get on the standard Mura. The SV doesn't have them, it just has this sort of black surround. But my God, is this a beautiful car. Look at that orangey, tanny interior. Just contrasts so well with this blue metallic exterior. Look at it. Look at that. Look, look how you can see. Look at the engine right there. You can see it through the glass. That is phenomenal. You've obviously got the traditional Italian long arm, short legged driving position. You've got loads of dials right there. Look at it. Oh, I'm not forgetting the switches on the roof, which of course every car with switches on the roof is automatically the coolest car ever made. Look at the quality of those switches, for goodness sake. It looks like someone's ripped them off of an old amplifier and just drilled them into the dashboard. Many of you have commented that we should get a Mura, and I have to say, I do agree with you. The SV is the one to have. This is particularly beautiful, and it's metallic blue. I mean, I have to say, this is a strong contender, but could I live with it? What are these like to own? I really have no interest whatsoever in the super modern Ferraris. I think my real passion for Ferrari ended probably at round about the Enzo TDF sort of level. And consequently, the LaFerrari Aperta, which we've got here in black in the showroom, does literally nothing for me. It might be part of the Holy Trinity. It might be a car that people lust over. But for me, no, nope, I just walk straight past it and into these more classic ones. I would take a Mura SV over a LaFerrari Aperta 100% of the time. And here, tucked away where no one's really paying it any attention, a beautiful 550 Barchetta. Tour de France blue, cream leather, racing harnesses, manual gearbox, left-hand drive, but what a car. And no one is paying it any attention whatsoever. And then we come to the reason why we're here. Two cars which anyone in their right mind would call the greatest Ferraris. We've got an F50 right here and over there an Enzo. Now the F50 is hands down along with the 288 GTO the number one choice that you have said should be the F40 replacement. And it is hard to argue, folks, when you have a V12 naturally aspirated manual gearbox Ferrari, essentially a Formula One car for the road, although that's obviously nonsense. They only made 350, super rare, super expensive, offering one of the most visceral experiences that you can find in any car. Look how simple the cabin is. No buttons on the steering wheel, no buttons all over the dash, no passenger display, no electronics of any kind. Classic and pure. So what do you think? This example, I'll take you through the details of this example, but I mean, I have to say, it is epic in the flesh. We're gonna be driving one of these cars very soon, and I think you should probably come along for the ride. Equally epic, the Ferrari Enzo. Again, V12, again, naturally aspirated, but this time with a paddle shift gearbox. 
but what an iconic shape. Generally hated at the time, not many people really liked the shape of the Enzo. Values were languishing at the sort of £700,000 mark. No one really wanted them, but now people are recognising that this, again, is one of the all-time greats. And here at Joe Macari, we've got both this and the F50 sat right next to each other. In terms of supercar shopping, you don't get much better than that. This example has actually got Enzo Ferrari's signature on the seats, as well as in the plaque on the centre of the tunnel. You can see the electronics coming in where there were none in the F50. Now we've got buttons appearing on the steering wheel, Formula One inspired dashboard. We've got all sorts of We've got controls in the centre. It's a lot more fussy in here, but still epic. Not sure about the dice, obviously. I believe that's ironic. It has aged very well, in my opinion. It's one of those outrageous shapes. It's instantly recognisable. It can only be an Enzo. A lot of people have told me they are a bit of a pig to drive. I think we're going to have to drive this one as well very soon. And I think, again, you're going to have to come along for the ride. Hope you're okay with that. Thanks for watching this episode with supercar shopping for an F40 replacement here at Joe Macari. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. We do read them all. And there'll be another Car Guys episode along next week. <laughs> <laughs>